Alrighty, fellow travelers, welcome back to Adventures of a Traveling Don. My name is Benjamin O. I'm in the beautiful seaside town of Bucksport, Maine, and we are going to be continuing our coastal Maine tour that I've been doing throughout this past summer. Now, this is going to be a big one because this is going to be a tour of Route 1. We're basically in between the Portland and the Bar Harbor section that runs across the coastline. Uh, so the main drag that runs through Maine, of course, is the 95. However, not super scenic. The one it takes you longer to get from Portland to Bar Harbor, usually about four-ish hours if you're going straight through, but there's so many places to stop, and I'm going to show you all the great spots on the way. So let's go ahead and start here in Bucksport, go across the bridge, and we're going to head down the one. Okay, so the first main stop that we're doing here on Route 1 is what I would consider like the Penobscot Triad. So this is where the Penobscot River meets Penobscot Bay. And you have, of course, Bucksport, which we were at earlier for the opening. And then you go across Verona Island, and then you have this massive bridge in the background that you see there. That is the world's largest uh, observatory bridge. On the right hand side that you see behind me, that actually, that tower actually has an observatory that's about 440 some odd feet high, which is about 140 plus feet higher than the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Uh, and it is a gem of coastal Maine, which is really cool. It's got a great history to the bridge itself, which was finished in 2006, took over from a, the one of the original steel bridges in Maine that was built in 1931. A lot of cool history to it. It's all part of this like Fort Knox State Park, which of course I am in right now. This is Old Fort Knox, named after not the not the gold uh, not the gold holding Fort Knox that you know of in Kentucky. I think it's Kentucky or Tennessee, but this is the Fort Knox that was named after uh, Henry Knox. It was a major general and commander of the artillery in the American Revolution. A great hero, and of course the first Secretary of uh, War as well for the United States. But it's a huge, massive complex. Like you ever get the chance, come here. It was only nine dollars to see the both the observatory and Fort Knox. You can stay as long as you like up until they close at 5 p.m. And it's just this huge, one of these massive American coastal defensive forts that were made in the mid 1800s after the war of 1812 when they wanted to shore up the the coastal defenses interestingly enough Fort Knox was never fully completed it started in 1844 they kept trying to get more funds and and uh, complete the whole thing but the actual vision for the fort was never fully realized. So it is kind of fascinating but the main part here where it has the parade grounds down there and a lot of the artillery area, that's all been uh, finished. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of a cool first spot, a lot of great American history to it, uh, and just beautiful views, 360 all around of the Penobscot River and the Penobscot Bay. I would not want to be on a ship when one of these things was firing at me. Just look at the massive size of this cannon. Holy hell. So the second spot down on the Route 1 that you want to stop at is a place called Belfast. And it's this beautiful little kind of like seaside town, very much kind of very rustic. It's got a lot of um, uh, fishery, just like a lot of these main coastal towns do. Uh, they even have their own huge shipyard, which is really kind of cool. Has a nice, uh, very similar to like Booth Bay Harbor, where it has a uh, walking bridge that connects both sides of the bay. Uh, so it's, it's basically, uh, Belfast is split between, you have Belfast Bay here in the background, and then uh, the Pasacasa Wakia 
River, which I don't even know if I even said that right. <laughs> it's, it's a mouthful, so I think it's like 15 letters in the name. But it's just this really nice town, and the reason why you come down here is particularly around this time. It's mid-September, we get what they call the Indian summer or the, uh, the false fall where beginning of September it cools down and then we get about a week in the middle of September where the temperature ratchets back up to about the 80s. Uh, and it's like, okay, it's hot, it's muggy. What do you want on a day like this? You want some ice cream. So you go to the Wild Cow Creamery here. This is very well known up in this area. It is fantastic. I mean, they got all different types of ice creams uh, that you can do in waffle cone style. You can do in sundae style, all the different toppings you ever want. I personally, because I saw that they made, Scratch made their own um, uh, hot fudge, I had to just get the simple vanilla and hot fudge and it was absolutely fantastic so yeah you're coming up down in this area i mean there's a lot of uh, ice creameries around here but wild cow creamery it's right behind the purple baboon gift shop which is just kind of fun in and of itself really really good ice cream Okay, so after Belfast, as you're heading down uh, the one, there's this little spot, this little small, you could blink and you're just through it, a uh, town called Lincolnville Beach. And it is one of the few sandy beaches here along the coastal main area. It's just about 15, 20 minutes after Belfast, about 10 minutes before you hit Camden and Rockport, which is the next spot going on. But it's just kind of a cool little spot. Like I said, it's very small. It's like one street, probably like about a mile-ish and you're already through it. Um, but it does have a lobster pound, does have the uh, whale tooth uh, um, pub. But the biggest thing, of course, is the fact that it is one of the few sandy beaches. So if you ever need on this drive to stop and uh, get your toes wet and uh, nice and sandy, this is the place to do it, Lincolnville Beach. Okay, so your next spot is here in Camden, and this is one of the bigger and probably more beautiful towns of the the whole Route 1. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's got a couple of different parks throughout the town just that, that are on the wharf, uh, including Rockport further down as well. But it's just a gorgeous spot. There's so much to do here. There's so many restaurants, cafes. They even have like a Blaze restaurant, which we have the original one, I believe. I think the original one was in Bar Harbor, and then they have one here as well, which is really, really good pizza spot um, if you are looking in the mood for pizza. But it's just an amazing coastal town. Down. You get a lot of the tour boats for uh, whale watching, uh, any kind, anything when it comes to going out on the water, lighthouse tours, all that stuff. You can get a lot of that here, and it's just a great, beautiful town. So make sure you check out Camden if you ever do this kind of uh, coastal main tour. Okay, so you're traveling coastal Maine. One of the big things that you obviously want to see, of course, that Maine is known for, is the lighthouses. Now, most of the lighthouses are not off of Route 1, which is the most direct route. Uh, most of them are down those little inlets, and they're anywhere from like 15 to like 30 minutes away from the main thoroughfare. However, this one here is just off of Route 1, and this is the Rockland Breakwater Lighthouse. It's at the end of the massive breakwater that's here at the Rockland uh, Bay, and of course you have the town of Rockland in the background. But if you want to see a lighthouse and you're doing Route 1, this is the easiest one to do. Uh, now it is a bit of a walk. It's a very long breakwater. It's probably close to about anywhere between a mile to a mile and a half one way. So you get a nice little walk out of it. I would also recommend not being here at the highest tide, particularly if there is any kind of storm off the coast or anything like that, because you can see that there is water on the rocks um, at the top of the breakwater. 
but in most cases it's fantastic it's an old uh, well, it's actually not that old I think it's like it was built in like the 1970s or 1980s uh, but it is a really nice little lighthouse at the end of the breakwater it gives you beautiful surrounding 360 views of the entire bay and Rockland So by the way, when you're in Rockland, if you're looking for a place to eat, come to the south side of town called a place called The Landing. I've been here a couple different times on my way up and down from Texas to Maine, and I love this little spot. It's got a nice little outdoor area. Um, inside's actually pretty cute too, but outdoor, it's just got this beautiful water view, and it's just this fantastic seafood restaurant. They're open for lunch from 11, 30 I think to 2 and then uh, 5 o'clock till close for dinner and you gotta really get here at 5 because this place does start to fill up around 6 or so but I got myself the haddock chowder and it just looks absolutely fantastic got so much chowder onions potatoes in there just all diced up oh, oh that's hot and so so good Okay, so for the main dish, I got myself the mussels, and these look absolutely phenomenal, and quite a lot. It almost looks like a pound and a half or something like that, um, but it is got, uh, I think it's uh, garlic, cream, and mustard. Very, very simple. It's interesting, I'm, I'm not used to a sauce that doesn't have either butter or white wine in it, so we're going to give this a try real quick. Ooh, that's nice. So it's a lot creamier. It's not as like buttery. Um, it doesn't. Uh, you can definitely taste the mustard in that. It's actually really, really good. It's just different than what I'm used to. But I will say, like any muscle, it's all about dipping the bread in that sauce, like that. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so the final spot that we're doing on this particular tour today is a place called Damascata. And Damascata is the home and capital of oysters here in Maine. And I am at a place called the Shuck Station. And it's right on the main downtown strip here and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's just kind of this cool outdoor covered area, picnic tables all over the spot. They got a bar and everything. But they are known, of course, for their oysters, just like Damascata is known for their oysters. They do, of course, like uh, tours throughout the Damascata River. Uh, which is fantastic when it comes to oysters. So yeah, if you're all about oysters, just like most of Maine is lobster, Damascata is specifically the oysters. Now we're gonna go ahead and try some oysters here. I've got three different types. I've got 12 oysters in total, uh, four of each, and I've got the black stones, the pemaquids, and the moon dancers. I've had pemaquids and moon dancers before, but I've never had the black stones. So cheers to you guys. And here is to a delicious black stone oyster. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. A little bit saltier than what I'm used to on Bar Harbor with the Barber Blondes, but that's still very nice. They even give you like this little uh, vial right here of the, um, some kind of mignonette for you there. I just go ahead and get a little bit of that, put it on top of the oyster, and take another crack at this one with the mignonette, and I also put a little cocktail sauce on this one as well, so. Oh, that changes everything. Damn, that's good. Mmm. Delicious freaking oysters. Alright guys, so I'm going to end this video here in Damascata. Uh, I got down pretty much to most of what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, we didn't get time to get down to Wicaset in time uh, to go to a place called Red Eats. Uh, if you 
get the chance, check that place out. It's voted the best lobster roll, but they close at five. And honestly, this is like what I did today has taken me about nine hours to do. Uh, it's uh, There's a lot, and it was fast-paced, as you saw, it was action-packed. Um, I never really got to delve into each town like fully, but I hope I gave you a little morsel of each spot so that when you kind of decide to come up here, you'll explore even further. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little day trip. I've got stuff I got to get to Portland. I got stuff for the next video I got coming up for you guys. I hope you guys stay tuned for that one next week. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me on this little quick tour of the coastal main towns between Bar Harbor and Portland. And I will see you guys on the next adventure. Peace out. Mm -hmm.